This video is about probably the most famous three terms in all of electricity, which are, stand, which are V, I, and R, and those stands for volts, V for volts, I for current, and R for resistance. These are the three most famous terms. And the reason why they're sort of famous or why we need to have a, sort of have a whole video on them is because in popular language like news or colloquialisms or people maybe who don't understand fully what electricity is, these things are more or less used interchangeably. And if you really wanted to add to the alphabet soup, you could, onto volts, current, or resistance, you could say power and energy and all these things. You're just using interchangeably, but they're very different. Let me get in and try to describe uh, where they come from. Okay. So imagine that you had a water pump here. These are one of say maybe those old-fashioned water pumps here that has a lever on it like this. Maybe it's sort of connected down and does a few things here. The point is that you would stand behind the lever like this and start pushing it up and down. You'd push this lever, lever up and down and up and down and up and down. And if you did that, water would start to flow out of this pipe. So there might be a well well in here, like the water, this, this pump might be dug all the way down. There might be a pipe going all the way down to the water table down here. There's actually water under here. And, of course, maybe there's water in there, groundwater or something, and this pipe goes all the way down. So, of course, what the pumping motion does is sort of create a lower pressure situation up on top here where the water can start flowing up through the pipe. But you have to keep pumping because you have to keep maintaining a lower pressure in this region of the pump. And of course, by the time the water reaches up in this level right here, this level here, it of course, can escape the pump and be used. Fill your bucket or your water bottle or whatever, start coming out like that. So, all told, just right off, here's our first analogy here. This water pump and how hard you're able to pump and how big the pump is, that is a mechanical analog of exactly what volts are right here. That is what your V is right here. So first off here, you can really think of V here, volts, as sort of like the water pressure, water pressure of origin or something like that. It's what makes the water flow, okay? And of course, the more voltage, the more pressure you get, less voltage, less pressure. And so the same thing sort of holds with electricity here is the voltage is what actually gets the electrons to move like that. Okay, so there you go. That's sort of the first analogy with volts right there. It's like the water pump. And, of course, when you head on now is this water here that's in the system here. The water here, that's like the electrons. So there's your, there's your second analogy right there. So the water that actually flows out of this pump here would be the electrons, but, of course, uh, in many cases, at least when you're building an electronic circuit, it doesn't do anyone good to have water, in the case of plumbing, spraying all over the place. So you want to sort of contain that flow and maybe use it for something, so you might want to route it down a pipe like this. And so the pipe here, well, that's like the wire. So you know that electrical circuits have wire in them, or like the metal. We have another video where we discussed just how electrons get to flow in a wire here, so that's exactly what the pipe is. So you start pumping with the water pressure, the pump or the water pressure, and in many cases here, that's just going to be the good old battery for electricity right here. So the battery or the water pump is what's going to get the flow started. The pump gets the water flowing, the battery gets the electrons flowing here, and of course what actually flows is the water or electrons, and what you make them flow through is either a pipe or a wire. A pipe is water, of course, wire is electrons, electricity, and so off it goes like this. But then what happens is sometimes in the pipe, maybe the pipe is old, and it has some portion on it might be a little thinner like this. Maybe there's a big thing of rust right here. Or maybe there's like a, a rock lodged right here in the center or something like that. So what happens is that as the water flows through the pipe, it's going to run into that obstruction and maybe bounce off a little bit before it can continue. Then it's going to hit that rock and bounce off a little and continue like that. And then what will happen is maybe a repair job was done on the pipe a long time ago. And for some reason, this region right here, the pipe gets really thin like that. Then maybe there was another repair job where the pipe gets really thick, something like that. Someone was fixing the system with any parts they had available like that. And so it sort of goes like this. And so what happens in here is these little obstructions where the water runs into things or suddenly where it's traveling down like this and it all has to squeeze through this little section before it continues like that. Then it can open it out. Oh, it has plenty of breathing room in here. And it can bounce around and come down like that. All of these things here collectively are what are known as the electrical resistance right here. The R in there and the R of this little pipe. And you might not think this has anything to do with R, but it does because there's very little resistance over here. So the resistance here, these are sort of like the obstructions. Obstructions that slow the flow. Let's just say it like that. That's exactly what resistance here are. Obstructions that slow the flow. So a little bit of rust inside that pipe there, a narrowing pipe, 
or even a bigger pipe that suddenly doesn't have any instructions decreases the R. So the resistance in this region can be very small, very high in there, and sort of mid-range in there, and sort of varies a bit where it hits that rust in there. And so that's sort of where that resistance comes from here. So I add that on here. Let's say obstructions or pipe diameters here. That's resistance. Resistance. Yeah, that's where resistance is going to come from. Now, physically, in a piece of wire, where the resistance actually comes from then, of course, imperfections in the wire, maybe it's not a perfect lattice in there, but of course, as you know, our model from matter from the very first video in this series here are a bunch of lattice points right here, which we know in metals here are going to be copper ions like that. And what happens is electrons try to flow through here because of the electric field. They collide with the ions. It's like, bam, like that. Then they come up and get caught in the electric field and keep going that way and they keep colliding like that. So they can't really go very far between collisions. They end up making like a zigzag pattern like this as it goes through the wire like that. Now, they all eventually merge like that, but all these collisions here are their electrical resistance, that electrons feel when they go through wires because those lattice points, those copper ions, are actually obstructions. And that's also why the wi things get hot when they have electric current flowing through them because all these little collisions point here, collisions point deposits some energy into the wire, which gets lost, of course, and it means that's sort of why your battery ends up going dead because we have a very imperfect flow of electrons through the wire here. But that's where the obstruction comes from in there. And the other part, place where resistances can come from is certainly just the means of trans transporting these things here, but also sort of in this water circuit here, what you could put here, you could put a big water wheel there if you wanted to. So here's a water wheel. You could put a water wheel with a bunch of paddles on it like this. So there's some paddles and the water wheel and things like that. And so what will happen, of course, is when the water hits this paddle here, starts hitting the paddle, it will make it turn that way. And, of course, what the water wheel could possibly be attached to as well, just about anything, could be an electric generator or some sort of grinding mill where bread is made or something like that. But the point is that the water trying to turn the wheel here, this is also like a big obstruction here. So the wheel here collectively is like some big resistance itself because it doesn't really want to turn. Maybe it's old or friction. But then when you connect it to something like a generator, maybe it gets very hard to turn. But that's another resistance that the water has to encounter as it flows through its, uh, its cycle here. In the electricity analog right here, maybe let's make a little bit of a room right here. Where does that resistance come from in addition to flow? Well, you could definitely have that battery is some voltage like this, and here's a wire coming up like this. So all the analogy still holds. The electrons are going to flow out. They're going to get uh, have some resistance in this wire here. Then what you could put right here in the wire is a light bulb. Or you could put a little motor right here. Here's a little motor right here. So there's a little motor body, a little axis here that, that might have a little propeller on it that turns to, to cool you off on a hot day or something like that. So all these have resistance, like the light bulb has so much resistance inside of its wires here that when the electrons collide with the internal of the filament, the light bulb, gets, of course, gets hot very quickly, hotter than most materials around. In fact, so hot that it starts to emit visible light. In other words, it starts to glow right here. But all told, that's just another form of resistance that the electricity has to encounter on its way down its path. Same with the motor right here. Maybe not as much resistance as the light bulb or something it doesn't get as hot, but as it turns here, there's a bunch of resistance that it has to follow. And also, you notice another thing about the water and the electric circuit analogy here, it continues to be pretty, a pretty good one because what happens then is as the water flows, it eventually reaches this bottom level again right here, like it might get dumped into the ground or something or back into the aquifer, aquifer or something, but it eventually reaches this state in here where all on this region here, the water's sort of in limbo. can't flow anymore. It's not uphill, not downhill. There's no pump there. Nothing's get, nothing gets it going. It can't fall anymore through the water wheel. Or it's not being pushed through the pump anymore. Likewise, when the electrons come through this region right here, when they reach all of the electric through all their electrical components and stuff, and they reach it down here, and they're connected to this negative terminal of the battery. This is also negative terminal of the battery. This is also limbo for them as well. They can't do anything anymore. And so this is the case here, where both the potential energy is equal to sort of zero joules, and the electric potential is also equal to zero. There's just nothing that the charged electrons can do anymore unless the battery there picks them back up again and keeps them moving. Likewise, for this water over here, there's just nothing it can do here until it gets caught back in the reservoir and maybe back in that high, high to low pressure cycle of the water so it can keep going around again. So anyway, that's sort of the analogy there between these, the alphabet soup beginning of electronics here, the volts, current, and the resistance. Volts comes from a battery and it's like a water pump. Current is the flow of electrons through a wire, like the flow of water through a pipe, and resistance are it all the obstructions it'll encounter along its way, whether it's actually physical obstructions like little pieces of rust and rock 
inside of a pipe or a thinning pipe, or it's actually something like the resistance of a water wheel that it tries to get turning just the same way as electrical current encounters resistance in light bulbs and motors and things to get them going. So there's an introduction to you to the, the volts, current, and the resistance that we'll encounter as we go through electronics.